Okay, folks, welcome back to today's episode. And well, it's kind of a twofold episode. One is I'm going to give you an update on Project Blackjack and how she's been doing so far. And the second one is I'm going to tell you how I avoided almost dying. That's right, stay tuned. So, First off, I want to tell you how much I'm enjoying driving this $900 car. Granted, I spent $60 on it to get it here because, well, it was a non-runner. Then, I ended up having to put a lift kit. I didn't have to, but I did. And that was $200 American plus tax and shipping. I guess I got the shipping for free, uh, but convert that into Canadian money was about $260. My buddy Dustin gave me a really good deal on these 265 70 16 inch tires, so 31 inches tall. And we got everything put together and with a little bit of help from my son Junior and uh, my mechanic Tim, we got the lift kit put on. So to date we've been driving this thing for a few weeks now. I drove it all this week and you know what, I had to say that so far this car was a handful to drive with the lift kit. The first couple of days, no big deal. Uh, as the week went on, I noticed it just kind of handling really, really weird. So on Tuesday, I called and had an appointment made to get an alignment done. I figured, well, I better at least get that done to eliminate any squirreliness that may be there. Uh, so I send it into the alignment shop and well, we got an alignment. Then, we drove it home. So, the squirreliness never went away after I had it lined up. Anyways, this next part of the video is going to tell you exactly how I almost died with Project Blackjack. Let's take a look. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will notice that the other day on Thursday, I posted a picture of what happens when you don't have your wheels retorqued um, when having them changed at the garage. So the whole purpose of retorquing is to make sure that the initial tightening stays tight. What tends to happen is, especially if you're switching wheels from winter to summer, which we do a lot here in Canada, um, they'll tend to back off a little bit or they'll relax and your lug nuts will become loose. That is exactly what happened to Blackjack. You guys know that we put the lift kit on last weekend in the last video and I've been driving it all week and my intention for this video this week was to kind of give you guys a I've been driving it for a week, I've owned the car for several weeks now and here's some of the things I like and I don't like about it. That was supposed to be the nature of this next video. And then today, this happened. You can see that the studs are all grooved up. All five have marks on them to the point where they could have sheared off and I could have lost my wheel. Here's a better look at the wheel that the tire was on, all those holes, those lug nut holes have been ovaled out because this was wobbling around on those lug nuts. And you look at the, the lug nuts and even they are all chewed to pieces, all five of them. So this could have been a lot more catastrophic had I not caught it. And what made me catch it was, uh, this is Thursday at the recording of this video. On Tuesday, I noticed the car getting a little bit, you know, wonky. I don't know what other word to use, but it seemed to be wandering on the road. And I chalked it up to, well, you know what? I should get this thing lined up. It's time to get it lined up. So I sent it in yesterday and had the alignment done. By the way, this wasn't caught um, when the alignment was done. I drove it back from the alignment shop thinking, this is no better uh, than what it was before I sent it in. Came home that night. I came back out that night to help a buddy change some tires on his car, went home, came back here to work today, and on the way out for lunch, uh, it was just, it was almost undrivable. And I was starting to hear a noise and I instantly knew what it was. Um, 
and I was tur as I was turning into the Burger King uh, to get my lunch. So I, I grabbed my lunch, came back to work, pulled it in the shop, and this is what I found. So the whole purpose of having your lug nuts retorqued after having wheels changed or having your tires changed is just to make sure. I always tell my customer, you get about 100 kilometers or 60 miles on your car, bring it back free of charge, we'll go out in the parking lot and we'll walk around with a torque wrench and we'll snap them all tight again just to be sure. This is why we have that disclaimer on all of our invoices to make sure you have them retorqued. Nobody listens anymore until something like this happens or something a little more catastrophic. So in order to fix the problem, what we have to do is we've got to be able to get these studs out to swap them with new ones. Well, in order to do that, you've got to drain the differential fluid, pull those keys that hold it in place, and then pull the axle out. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to put a link right up here to the video that we did on Grandma, my other grandma key, when we did the rear end swap to a track lock 327 and showed you basically what had to be uh, done there. So we're basically doing that on blackjack at some point. Yes, we will swap the differential, but for now, I'm going to swap this axle. Uh, and I'm going to do the whole axle because I happen to have a spare one from Grandma sitting right here. And it's going to be just as easy to slide this one out once we unlock it, slide that one in, and then put everything back together. My estimate is it's probably only going to take us about a half an hour to do the whole thing and get this thing back down on the ground. So I'm going to do that and then when we're done with that we're going to continue this video for its initial purpose and that was telling you how we like the car so far in the few weeks of ownership since we've had it and the week since we've put this lift kit on. So I'm going to come back to you guys here in a minute. We'll take it for a ride. All right, so we've got this axle swapped out so the new lugs, uh, studs and the new lug nuts are on it. It literally didn't take me that long to swap out the axle. It took me longer to get that 10 millimeter bolt back into the ABS sensor. And to get the rear diff cover cleaned up so that we could silicone it back into place. As luck would have it, I don't have any rear end grease to put back in this thing, so it's going to have to wait till tomorrow morning till I can get some. Nevertheless, we will get on this ride just as soon as I get the diff fluid put back in it, so we'll catch up with you then. So guys, now it's time that we go out for a little drive and talk to you about my enjoyment on owning this car since I bought it. But can you believe it? It's like 6 o'clock in the evening and it's already black out. Anyways, let's go for a drive. So a couple of things to note about this car um, that I've noticed since I've bought it is there's a few little things that I'd like to work on trying to figure out how they work. One of them is, well, if you go back to the video where we bought the vehicle and it was a no start, we found out why it wasn't starting the valet switch on the remote start. I got up underneath the dash and I found out that the remote start is an actual Ford remote start system which I assume is installed by the dealerships when the cars are bought new. So I'd like to find a remote control uh, and get that programmed for this car because well in Canada it's good to have your cars warmed up before you hop in them. So being able to remotely start the car would definitely be an advantage. The other thing is the check engine light and any of you guys who own these cars probably already know exactly why the engine light is on because it's a common problem on these Panther platforms and that is the EGR. Uh, the car actually came with a new tube. Uh, the old tube was rusted out and they've currently got the EGR tube blocked off. So at some point we will be doing a video on replacing that. It's a little bit of a tight spot to get at but not terrible. And the other thing is the five digit code for the keypad on the outside of the door. Now, I don't have that code, it didn't come with an owner's manual, but as you guys may or may not know, you can get that code on the door module, which is located behind the door panel, on the driver's side door. So I'll have to get that door panel off and get that code and we'll see if that works. On Grandma, the keypad doesn't even work. I did get the code off that when we replaced the speakers, 
um, but the code doesn't even work so I'm assuming that the actual box is faulty to some degree. Anyways, let's get out on the road and get this thing for a little test drive. Now another little thing that we noticed when we were changing the uh, axle on this car was the differential tag was actually still there and I didn't think it was at first. But the tag told us that it's got the original gears in it, the 273, same as grandma. So we will be upgrading the gears on this at some point. Not sure which ones I'll go with. It'll all depend on what I can find, likely. Uh, 327 seem to be uh, the most common ones out there. The other thing that we found out with this car is that the speedometer is off, and rightfully so. You know, the car originally likely came with 225 60 16 tires which are probably somewhere around a 26 inch tall tire and now we're running 31 inch so everything else being equal that also tells me that if the drivetrain stays the same but the circumference of the tire changes you're going to change your speedometer and this car is no exception it happened with grandma when we changed the gears so see, we didn't change the tires but we did change the gears in this case we didn't change the gears but we did change the tires so right now I'll give you an example the GPS speed on this car says we're doing 72 yet the car itself says we're only doing 64 so basically I know that the speedometer is about 10 kilometers an hour slower or roughly about six miles an hour slower so that's something to keep in mind when you are driving because sometimes you could be driving through town and the car say you're doing one speed and you're actually going a difference so that's just something to get used to I'm probably not going to worry about it until we do change the gears in the car and then I will take it to Ford and uh, see if they can reprogram the gears for me or if I decide that I want to get this car Marty tuned, then we'll get that fixed at that point. Since I've owned the car, I really don't find a whole lot of difference between this one and Grandma. Uh, they both ride the same. This one has a little bit stiffer suspension on it now, basically because of the lift. But other than that, I don't notice a, you know, much of a difference at all. My wife came for a drive with me for the first time in it the other night and she says it's basically the same car inside. So um, I'm happy with it. I'm real excited that uh, you know we did get a little bit of a deal on it and uh, that we didn't have to do a whole lot to the car because, well, I don't like spending unnecessary money on project vehicles. I like spending the necessary money, which is making it look good, making it sound good. So anyways, you know, having said all of that, we're in a position now where we can basically just drive the car for a while and enjoy the creation that we have. Some of you guys are going to ask, you know, what's the next step? What are we going to do with Blackjack in the future? And some people have suggested, you know, putting it on a 4x4 frame. Mm, no, I don't think I want to do that. I'm happy with the lift the way that it looks, kind of the pre-runner Gambler 500 look. And I'm okay with that. Somebody suggested putting a manual transmission in it. And I would actually consider that. So having said that, I am kind of in the process of trying to find out what it's going to take to do so. And I can only assume that I'm going to have to find an old junked Mustang to rob parts out of, such as you know the transmission, clutch slave cylinder, pedals, uh, brake booster, any of that stuff that we may need to make that swap possible. And the big one that a lot of you have suggested over the years, ever since I've owned Grandma, uh, is either turboing, supercharging, procharging, some sort of a forced induction on one of these cars. So I can pretty much guarantee you that if I do anything to Blackjack, it probably will be a cheap eBay turbo, uh, something that we can do on the cheap. If I do something with Grandma, it may be something more along the lines of a supercharger or pro charger but that won't be for a while down the road as we know those things are expensive and well quite frankly youtube's not paying me that much yet so if you guys want to see some of those mods done to either one of these cars we've got to get the channel grown so that 
we can get a little bit more ad revenue and to be able to afford to do some of these better projects. Anyways, long and short, I love this car. Just as much as I love grandma, they both suit a purpose. Uh, we're both, my wife and I are having fun driving them. And you know what? Blackjack probably isn't the last one that you'll see on the channel. A lot of guys say that they want to see a Crown Vic, uh, maybe even a town car. And the idea at some point was to find an old P71, uh, something that we can just beat the crap out of. Well, I think we've got that in Blackjack and we will be doing some videos of just that in the near future. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little bit, uh, this video on this um, mishap that we've had with Blackjack and uh, the fact that we are enjoying it so far to date and there's going to be a lot more videos to come. Uh, obviously you guys know that you know Blackjack and Grandma are what seem to be the center uh, of the channel at the moment and it probably will be for a little while. We still have some work to do on Old Dale. We've got another little project that we want to do on the old Mopar. So those will come over the winter months. You guys are going to have to stick around for that. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, I encourage you to do so because we are very, very close. We're less than 200 subscribers away from 5,000 subscribers and I promised you guys that I would release the video uh, of the shenanigans that we did a couple weekends ago, which included blowing up a Toyota Camry and a PT Cruiser. So get me to 5K, let's keep growing, let's set that next goal at 10K and onward. Thank you guys so much for your support uh, with myself, with Grant Tommy uh, on the uh, Car Guy and Six Fan Show. We're looking forward to starting up season five. We've agreed that we're gonna do that and uh, we hope that you guys will tag along with us. In the meantime, guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you all. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.